My name is Steve Stevens, the best sports consultant money can buy. I make more money betting sports than anybody in the world. I'm the one that tells you who to bet. I'm not a bookie. I'm the bookie killer. If money talks, then I got a lot to say. I'm on the grind trying to make $100,000 a day. The game that I pick, believe me, it's a winner. What I know could get you rich, because all I pick is winners. Welcome to Las Vegas. Money talks. Money talks. Welcome to Las Vegas. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. You're tuned into the VIP Sports Podcast. I'm Darren Otero, a.k.a. Steve Stevens, the bookie killer, sitting here with my ride-along host, the paparazzi. Good morning, brother. Man, what, what a week. We finally previewed the Million Dollar Weekend, and I mean, we could not have had a bigger and better response than we did. I want to thank everybody that got to see the little sneak peek. I told you guys, if it was up to me, I would have released episode one and really blew their fucking mind. Yeah. But uh, we got approval to show you guys a little bit of the sneak peek of the concept. But I do want you guys to understand the real show is no comparable to the fucking sneak peek. There's so many more layers of the new show with the women, the party, the sales room, my motivational meetings, everything that goes along with VIP sports. But what blew my mind is... Where's the haters? Even the haters can't hate no more, huh? I, I mean, how are you going to hate on a production like that? that I mean, that, that really was Money Talks on steroids in an updated time. And like you the, said, the, the show is. The yeah. sneak peek wasn't, but yeah. No, I mean, that, that's really a six out of ten of what they're really going to see. I mean, they don't see really you interacting with the clients, taking them to special places that only you have access to. Talking shit, going hard in the paint. Yeah. I was kind of calm in that sneak peek. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> they, they don't even see, like, you know, the, the game there that, that the 250 grand was bad you know, an actual fight that actually took place there in the sports book. They don't see any of that. Yeah, they, they will, though. And uh, But there was one hater. Uh, purse boy, fucking stop, bro. <laughs> you, you need to fucking stop, bro. You've been fucking sandbagging some raggedy-ass video that you've had for four years and try to put it out when my sneak peek comes out. Well, guess what? I'm signed to 75 episodes, little dick. Don't try to keep up with me. You're nothing like me. And if you ever want to put out a video that's heartfelt about your lifetime story, you might want to come from the heart instead of reading a teleprompter, you fucking clown. You think anyone gives a fuck about your life story? You come from nothing? You were broke? Who the fuck is it? Who the fuck didn't come up from nothing? Except for the difference in me and you, I actually come from North Las Vegas and was broke and was on food stamps. You forget you went to school with my homegirl Carly Vegas in Hawaii? You were far from fucking broke. So stop all your fucking bullshit and stop all your lies. You are literally the biggest lying fucking piece of shit I've ever met in my life. Your minus $500 whale plays suck whale cock. Your 18 fucking parlays you give out a day do nothing but bury people. And you are a fucking joke. And why don't you tell the truth, homeboy? Uh, you said you were broke. Was that before or after your family got that big, big settlement that you've been living on? Was that before or after the big settlement? And then you talk about you moved them in the house. You mean you finally paid them back the money that you stole and allowed them to move into a house where you live in the third bedroom? You are a fucking clown, dude, well, for real. Remember, he already did try to emulate you. He had a, a show that was on Showtime. It wasn't his show. He was a fucking yeah. appearance on four, the show. Four, I own Money Talk. Four, four episodes that they didn't even It was rerun. a flop. Correct. It didn't even rerun. It ran for 30 days. Correct. Little dude, Correct. don't try to keep up with me because you can't. And you are the literally the biggest liar and worst fucking handicapper anybody's ever met, dude. You are the definition of a clown. Plain and fucking. Great, great at marketing, but horrible at every other part of it. Man. He's terrible. Anyway, welcome back. Like I said, September 16th, podcast number 332. Our show sponsored by Wager Attack, Blue Chew, and our boys over there at DraftKings. Once again, guys, don't forget if you haven't seen the million dollar weekend. Go to our YouTube channel, VIPSportsLasVegas.com. Check it out. Share it with your friends. And check it out how it is to live a life of the number one sports consultant money can buy. Plain and fucking simple. Get a hold of us at 877-220-6540. Go to our website, VIPSportsLasVegas.com. Put your phone number into our website. We'll get back with you with a free pick. Follow us on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook at VIPSportsLV. If you don't want to call... Direct message me is probably the best way about going to do business, and you'll hear back from me immediately. 
Remember guys, we will not DM or spam you about contests, promotions. So if you get contacted by an account with my picture that says they are me, look for that blue check mark for your own safety. And all you other motherfuckers trying to get the handle, million dollar weekend, million dollar weekend, Steve Stevens, million dollar weekend VIP, you're just wasting your time. I will have you shut down. I own all those fucking names. You could go out and grab them all right now. When I get around to it, because my show is syndicated on television, I will have those in my pocket immediately. So guys, find something else to do. You know what I mean? It's a waste of your fucking time. If you want to subscribe to the podcast on YouTube or wherever you listen to the podcast, click the bell on YouTube to receive the notifications on all videos we post. And we do greatly appreciate your thumbs up and we do read all your comments. And guys, make sure you really do have that uh, bell uh, clicked. Uh, If you haven't checked it in a while, make sure it is. That way you're getting all the notifications on the podcast. All of Steve's specials that he's doing, you know, it's football season, so he's running a lot of promotions and also the new videos that we are coming out with. So make sure you subscribe there. And if you want to get in the game and set yourself up with Steve's absolute blow of winner merchandise, his t-shirts, hoodies, and more for the recreational or professional sports better who wants to be a winner inside and outside of the sports book, visit absoluteblowoutwinner.com today. We are offering a free face mask with any purchase of $20 or more. You've got winners. You've got losers. Which one are you? I'm an absolute blowout winner. Anyway, guys, let's move right into NFL Week 2, which is after the Raiders' Monday night victory, an NFL record 12 underdogs covered against the spread in Week 1, which is what I said earlier in the show. If you think you're going to bet favorites and overs, you're going to be broke by week fucking three without any shadow of a doubt. And the dogs are barking, paparazzi. Well, I know, I know we walked through a couple of sports books uh, earlier in the week, and I know a lot of your sports book friends were smiling up uh, a storm there. They were real happy over sports the sports books. Sports managers week. loved the first week of NFL, yeah. no doubt about it. Short recap. We gave a lot of great and useful trends last week, but these were two of the best golden nuggets. I said the last three teams that drafted a quarterback with the first overall pick and were favorites in week one failed to cover and got blown out. Guess what the result was? Sorry, Trevor. Jacksonville struggled all game and lost to the Houston Texans 37-21. There was a blowout winner for you right there. Underdog, huh? Yeah, right. I gave it to you guys. I said the Las Vegas Raiders were 7-0 to the over at home last season. The result? Both teams combined scored 60 points in Las Vegas' dramatic 33-27 win in overtime. And, and how about that game? Was our city not absolutely fucking rocking? Well, they've said that we got the number one NFL fucking fans just like we have in hockey. Yep. I mean, it wasn't any surprise. No. So, like I said, man, you guys get a chance to come out to these Raider games. You're in for a major treat because our fans are on fire. Well, you better come vaccinated, though, and you better not try to come with some fake fucking card because uh, there were rests made over at that game with people trying to do it. You don't come vaccinated, you're not going to the game. And yeah, if you're a diehard fan that's been there since L.A. and Oakland, don't come out here with your drunk PCP wanting to fight bullshit because yeah. we ain't into it. We got money out here. We're trying to support our team, see them winning. We're not trying to fight each other. Not to mention, what are you fighting for anyway? Raiders ain't paying you. I don't know what you're repping them that hard for. So enjoy the game because if I'm there with my kids and you start doing some dumb shit, spilling beer, talking shit, best believe you will get knocked the fuck out. So calm and slow your rolls, and let's enjoy these games. Here's a question uh, uh, they wanted to ask me, Poppy. Yeah, well, uh, it's a question for the bookie killer. Arizona dominated Tennessee in week one. Chandler Jones had five sacks, but the Titans offensive lineman Taylor Luan tweeted, I got my ass kicked today. No way around that. I let the team and the fans down. Thank you, Chandler Jones, for exposing me. It will only force me to get better. Question. How much do you respect a player like that for going out there tweeting and taking responsibility? I fucking love it. He took responsibility for his actions, realized he could have been a lot better in that particular game, said that this other player exposed his weaknesses. Now you go back to the drawing board, you go and watch tape, and you make yourself that killer who you really are, plain and simple. I loved it. Showed a lot of class, a lot of respect, and it also shows motivation to get back in that next game and do whatever it takes to get the fucking job done. That's a heart of a true winner. I I totally agree. When a player can step up like that, these guys want accolades, want to make the millions and do whatever. But when you fuck up and can go out there and, you know, apologize to your team and the fans and say, hey, I want to get better, nothing better than that. Same with me. When I lose a $100,000 game for one of my clients, you don't need to scold me or or think I'm going to come up with an excuse. 
I ride myself harder than you could ever ride me about my mistakes or a bad call. You know what I mean? Or not performing to my expectations. Oh, and on that note, guys, I apologize. Last week, I was definitely wrong about Iowa State. And uh, when I'm happy to take the credit for well, it makes I'm sense. Right about, I'm happy to we, take we said it on the show. They shouldn't be taking your games. We're just, yeah, hey, yeah. You, all, I mean, but at the same time, you have an opinion. You guys want to yeah. know who's going to fucking win. You better call the office and pay some money, and we'll that's, tell you who we're on. That's but no, sure. nah, don't stop giving out your opinions. That's part of this fucking show. I wanted to mention one more thing about the million dollar weekend because, mm-hmm. uh, you know, we hit 100,000 views in a couple days. Yeah. Guys, that particular video would have hit millions of views within four or five days. I talked to YouTube personally. Yeah. Because I put the Drake music and unauthorized music on there, it makes the video not able to be monetized Correct. or promoted by YouTube. Right. So, uh, you know, if you guys are wondering why it has 100,000 in a couple days rather than a million, that's your answer. I wasn't going to go change it, nor do I really give a fuck about the views. I'm already signed with a major television network. Uh, we got a tens of millions of dollars deal locked in. So the show is going to be aired. But uh, I just wanted to make that very clear because yeah. some people only look at views. And they're like, well, fuck, I mean, I mean, 100,000 in fucking 48 hours is nothing to fucking shake a stick at. No. But I wanted to explain to the people that YouTube has policies. And because of the unauthorized music that I used, uh, it is what it is. Yeah, so. yeah, I mean, you were well aware of it. You were told yeah. before. You could, have, so, you could have gone and changed the music, but you wanted it to be genuine. But my everybody. point is, the only people that have seen it are people that are following our channel. Right. That's it. It's not promoted or marketed anywhere Unlike fucking Purse Boy does with his fucking video. However, so, if, you, if they want to share it, if you guys want to share it and get it out, we'd love it because we want people to see it. No doubt about it. But uh, like I said, that real deal will be coming soon. NFL Thursday night poll question. Thursday night, Giants at Washington, minus three and a half. Podcast will probably be airing during this time, but maybe not if we can get it out early. Here's a trend. Giants quarterback Daniel Jones is now four and ten against the spread at home as a starter. But... Former NFL quarterback and NFL analyst Trent Dilfer says New York fans need to stay patient because Jones has the potential to be a very productive starter in the NFL. Well, I'm glad that's what you fucking think, Trent. But, uh, you know, you don't know shit. You were terrible as a quarterback. So I don't know how much advice we want to take from you. But uh, here's the poll questions. Do you agree or disagree that he has potential to be a very productive and one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL? What's your answer? Uh, I, I mean, I, I don't give up on a guy two years in. So I, 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 does he still have the potential? He does. Do I think it's fair for a guy who's had 14 starts to just slam the door on him? No. They had Saquon Barkley, who was going to be a great running back, got injured. It's going to be coming back probably tonight. Uh, so they, they, they've had an injury. So you agree he'll have potential? I agree that he still has uh, potential. Do so I do I. He, do I think he's going to be John Elway? No. That's my exact words. Do I think he has potential to do better? Yes. Is he going to be one of the top in the league? No. If you go and fuck your girl every day, three times a day for 21 days, you're going to be a better fucker uh, after that 21 days, plain and fucking simple. So you practice anything, you're going to get better. But I'd like to see, uh, I, I don't see him being a, a, a top quarterback. I, I, I don't see Jones as uh, being uh, top five ever in his career. I mean, Stu needs to learn how to eat pussy. So if anybody wants to give a class to eat that, maybe Stu will get better at it. Uh, no doubt. Week two previews. Chiefs minus three and a half at Ravens. Total 55 and a half. Chiefs failed to cover at five and a half point favorites in week one at Cleveland. Chiefs covered last season in week three in Baltimore, 35-20. And the game hit the under 55 by just one point. Now, both these teams coming off a performance they're, they're not happy with. No. Nope. Uh, Baltimore... Fucked off that game with the Raiders. They're not too excited. Kansas City didn't really pound Cleveland the way they should have. However, you can't take anything from Cleveland. Those motherfuckers look like a Super Bowl contender. Cleveland played great. Baker Mayfield did look like John Elway. Uh, he really, really stepped up. Last uh, year this game... Why do game, you keep saying John Elway? Well, you feel know, like he's John one Elway. of the best quarterbacks or yeah, something? Yeah, I, I do. Uh, he, I, he's okay. There's plenty better. Yeah, but Joe Montana. I, yeah. I hear you. But uh, Steve Young was better now. Yeah, Steve but. Young. Uh, last year, this game was on a Sunday night, and uh, the line, I believe, was three or four. The Chiefs absolutely beat the shit out of Baltimore last year. Uh, Baltimore has questions with their running game, although their running game did look good against the Raiders, but I don't think the Raiders have a special defense. You want to hear about running games and who needs to be running. That, the, the fucking uh, Dallas Cowboys better learn how to run yeah. a little bit more. But uh, in this game here, the Chiefs and Ravens, it's, it's going to be a good game. Uh, the Ravens definitely don't want to start 0-2, but they are playing the Super Bowl champion Chiefs and uh, Mahomes. 
And uh, this should be one of the best games to watch of the game weeks. But uh, I think the Chiefs are going to take care of business again. More importantly, another great game to watch, Las Vegas Raiders at Steelers. Don't forget, Steelers always start the beginning of the season off real well. But like I said, the Raiders are on a mission to get the job done with that new stadium and their support. They got a whole new outlook on this entire season, knowing yep. that we got their motherfucking back. Yep. Uh, Raiders at Steelers. Steelers minus five and a half, total 47. Las Vegas defensive end Matt Crosby had six tackles, two sacks, and two tackles for the negative yards in week one against Baltimore. I said the Bills look like a contender this year, but don't forget a well-rested Big Ben absolutely lit it up to start the year last season. Result, Steelers upset the Bills and six and a half point dogs in week one. And I will say I had the Bills, yep. plain and simple. Uh, that game lost. Like I said, it was fucking terrible. You got Rams minus four at Indy, total 47 and a half. Colts quarterback Carson Wentz was 25 of 38 for 251 yards, two touchdowns, but lost 28-16 to Seattle. No matter how good Carson Wentz plays, can he ever go to a team where he just wins? No. I don't think so either. College football, guys. Uh, well, I also want to bring up Matthew Stafford. Had three touchdown passes, including 67-yarder and a 56-yarder. And uh, I was very uh, uh, impressed with Matthew Stafford. Yeah, I, I told everybody last year, uh, way before he signed with uh, the Rams, that's where he would end up. Uh, now uh, Sean McVay has a quarterback, a real quarterback. Uh, it's so no offense, Jared Goff. The Rams can be very, very dangerous, and uh, they looked great the other night. No doubt about it. Let's move right into college football, Poppy. Who's that brought to us by? My good friends over at Blue Chew. Uh, you know, fall is here, guys, and we could all use a stiff breeze, if you know what I mean. That's right. This episode is sponsored by Blue Chew. Guys, confidence can take you far in life. It can also help in the bedroom, especially when it comes time to step up to the plate. That's where Blue Chew comes in. Blue Chew is a unique online service that delivers the same active ingredients as Viagra and Cialis, but in a chewable tablet and at a fraction of the cost. You can take them anytime, day or night, so you can plan ahead or be ready when an opportunity arises. The process is simple. Sign up at BlueChew.com, consult with one of their licensed medical providers, and once you're approved, you'll receive your prescription within days. The best part? It's all done online. So no visits to the doctor's office, no awkward conversations, and no waiting in line at the pharmacy. Blue Chew's tablets are made in the USA and prepared and shipped direct to your door in a discreet package. Now, you know, with Blue Chew, men everywhere are excited to see the postman because when your package has arrived, your package has arrived. So if you could benefit from extra confidence when it's time to perform, and guys, we all could, that's for sure, if I could do the rest of the read, Blue Chew can help. And we've got a special deal for our listeners. Try Blue Chew free when you use our promotional code VIP at checkout. Just pay the $5 shipping fee. That's BlueChew.com. Promo code VIP to receive your first month free. Visit BlueChew.com for more details and important safety information. And we thank Blue Chew for sponsoring the podcast. Absolutely. So, uh, you know, uh, with Blue Chew, uh, men everywhere are excited to see the postman, like you said. No fucking doubt about it. Guys, there's nothing sexier than confidence. And Blue Chew can help you give you confidence where it counts. Yes. Blue Chew can help. And we've got a special deal for our listeners, right? Try Blue Chew for free. we we'll use our promotional code VIP at checkout. Pay $5 shipping. BlueChew.com. Promo code VIP to receive your first month free. Visit BlueChew.com for more details today. Important safety information. And we thank Blue Chew for sponsoring the podcast. It's so good we read it twice. But I wanted to make sure. I mean, like I said, they've been showing us some love. They need to come with a little bit more money, but uh, yeah. they've been one of our loyal sponsors. And for that, Blue Chew, we and, love and, you. And it works, guys. Uh, testimony, you've heard me talk about it for a couple of years. It really does work. Week three previews. Number four, I, um, Iowa State at 30 and a half against our boys UNLV. Uh, UNLV covered a large spread against uh, ASU in week two. Here's the question, Poppy. Is this a game you might be targeting in week three? I guess that would be a question for me. Absolutely. That is definitely a major play game that we have. Iowa State versus UNLV. You want to know who we're playing? DM me or call and take advantage of one of them promotions. Number 19, ASU minus two. At number 23, BYU. BYU has a chance to knock off three straight Pac-12 opponents. Yeah. Three-point spread. 
B- BYU, man, looked really, really good. Last week, they were seven-point home dogs to Utah, big rivalry game there. And uh, BYU just led start to finish. And uh, here's a big question for you. You know, obviously, they lost their uh, starting quarterback there to the Jets, got drafted. Uh, Zach Attack, baby. Zach, Zach Taylor, you loved him. But can quarterback Jared Hall make enough plays for BYU? And can Daniels and White have a big night at running back for Arizona State? What are your feelings on this game? I think Jaron Hall is no Zach attack. I think he can make enough plays uh, uh, for BYU. Uh, can Daniels have a big night at running back for ASU? Of course he can. Like I said, they don't have, like, the best defense in the fucking world. If he has a good game, he can definitely get his running game on. Be an exciting game to see. Number 22, Auburn at number 10, Penn State. Steve's absolute blowout winner last week. Mm-hmm. Penn State minus 10 and a half. Auburn hasn't played a Big Ten opponent in the regular season since 1991. 31. 31? 31. Oh, my fucking God. So 110,000 fans will be wearing white T-shirts at Beaver Stadium for the, for the traditional whiteout game. Should be interesting. Number one, Alabama, minus 15 at number 11, Florida. Hearing a lot of talk in the sports book. I think Florida can win the game out, right? Yeah, I hear you guys. When's the last time though Florida was at home getting 15 points? It's been a while. So like I said, just a little knowledge for you guys. If you're that strong enough to think Florida's going to beat Alabama outright, <laughs> number one, you're wrong. Number two, take your fucking 15 points. You know yeah. what I mean? And still be stressed out the entire game. Yeah. Total 58 and a half. Florida hung tough with Bama in the SEC championship game last season. Alabama's looking to score 30 or more points for the 25th consecutive time, which would be an all-time record, which I feel they will break that record this week. Alabama's quarterback Bryce Young will be making his first start in a true road game on Saturday. Does does that worry you at all, or do you just feel that obviously Alabama has elite quarterbacks and uh, that's that's the least of their worries? That's the least of their worries. Number 16, Coastal Carolina, minus 12.5 at Buffalo. Coastal Carolina is 2-0 against the spread, by the way, guys. Buffalo covered in week one, but lost to Nebraska in week two, 28-3. Looked absolutely fucking terrible, yeah, as Charles did. Barkley would say. Yeah, they did. The trend, both teams are trending to the over. Going back to last season, the total is 57, and Buffalo has covered nine straight home games. Number eight, Cincinnati, minus three at Indiana. This is one of Cincinnati's big games against a power five opponent. We're going to see what they can do. Indiana bounced back last week against Idaho after a poor effort in week one against Iowa. Here's the trend, guys. Indiana is just three and seven against the spread at home, underdog under Tom Allen. Cincinnati is one of the best teams in the country, definitely defensively, one of the top four or five, offensively much improved. And Cincinnati's in a conference that they need to win these games, especially against teams in other big power five conferences. So this is a must win for Cincinnati and they are a dominant team, I expect Cincinnati to get the job done. Let's move into Major League Baseball. Can you believe fucking Detroit, seven in a fucking row? Man, my Tigers have uh, surprised me all year. I thought they would be one of the worst teams in baseball, but A.J. Hinch has them playing really good, and uh, they've got a bright future, this team. Uh, Quick red-hot trend. Seattle Mariners have hit the over in 13 straight games. That's shocking. Once again, the Mariners hit the over in 13 straight games. They played a lot of extra inning games, though. Toronto 16-3 and in their last 19 games, but Toronto did lose as a minus 300 favorite on September 10th against Baltimore, so you got to be careful, those big fucking favorites. Uh, Baltimore's played really good the last couple of weeks. They've, they've beaten a lot of teams, but Toronto is probably the hottest team in baseball. They put themselves back uh, where they're actually in the playoffs right now. No that, doubt. That, that AL East between Toronto, Boston, and New York is insane. Tampa's already probably very much got that locked up, but for the uh, well, wild they, they, card They've been playing like they feel like they got locked up. Yeah, well, that, that's true. Tampa's not been playing the greatest, but they've got a, a, a nice lead out there. But for the second and third uh, wild card spots between Boston, Toronto, and New York, it's, it's going to be a nice little race here for the next three weeks. Last night, it started to rain, and the Yankees had runners on second and third, down one run in the top of the ninth inning. The grounds yeah. crew and Camden Yards was getting into position to roll out the tarp if directed to. But the home plate umpire ejected the grounds crew from the field, and the Yankees scored two runs and went on to win a very important game. Former Baltimore star Jim Palmer said he has never seen anything like this in baseball game ever. I, well, I it. sounds yeah. to me like they needed the Yankees to go ahead and get them runs in and get the job done, huh? It, it did. The umpire sure did. The grounds crew sure didn't want any part of it. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, Brett Gardner went and got uh, a single, got them the lead uh, 4-3, and they were able to hold on. But, yeah. 
the the umpire was going nuts. I didn't understand what was going on at first. He was very adamant. Get the fuck out of here. Get the fuck out of here. And you saw 10 guys from the grounds crew not not run back to their position, but literally run into the tunnel and got out, out of the field. It was, exactly. It Bounce, was funny. guys. We're going to finish this game out. AL wild card race. The Blue Jays, Yankees, and Red Sox are virtually tied for the top two wild card spots in the American League. The Yankees have the toughest remaining schedule. New York plays Boston on the 24th, which I wouldn't worry about, followed by a bloodbath in Toronto, and then back home again against the Rays to end the season. They definitely got a tough little ending there. In the National League, the St. Louis Cardinals have won five straight games. St. Louis plays San Diego in a huge series starting on Friday that could help determine who will play the Dodgers in the NL wildcard game as the Cardinals swept the Mets. They did. Uh, Like we just said, the Cardinals have won five straight games. Playing San Diego, that really will determine uh, one of the national wildcard spots, and that will be a great series this weekend. Some umpire stats update, guys. On Wednesday, Pat Holmberg was the home plate umpire for the Angels versus the White Sox games. Holmberg was 20-8 and eight to the under going into this game. Results, the Angels won 3-2, to two, and Holmberg is now 21-8 and eight to the under this season. Also, Adam Hermary is now 21-7 and seven in favor of the home teams, and Jason Visconti is now 20-7 and seven in favor of the of the road. You you know, to you guys, if you know that he has this kind of information is looking into that kind of detail. What are you betting on your own for? Exactly. If you're here to make money, even if you're there and that's just your hobby, you're watching the games, there's no better time to make money. But if you know this is the type of information he gets, there is no reason you are not calling 877-220-6540 and making yourself money while watching your game. Maybe a lot of these people are confused what I do and what a true sports consultant does. Yeah. It's not a guy to help you out. It's a guy to take over your entire portfolio while you focus on your day job and your life and your kids. And all I do is call you once a day. I do all the work. It's my grave for your payday, guys. A a true sports consultant, it's my job to make you a second income. It's not your job to put in a bunch of work and then call me and deal with me or bet on your own for the first three weeks, get buried, and then call me when your bankroll's gone. It doesn't work like that. How about calling me when you do have a bankroll so I can show you how to flip that shit like a world-class gymnast? Anyway, guys, the weather in Las Vegas is absolutely beautiful. It's the best time of the year to absolutely be here. Shout out to all my clients that are scheduled to be here in town over the next three weeks. Look forward to meeting you. Look forward to hanging out. And more importantly, I look forward to making you more fucking money than you could possibly ever imagine. It's football season, guys. Everybody's excited. I want everybody to be on the winning edge. Don't forget to take advantage of that promotion that I'm doing today. $149 for an owner selection that I charge $500 for. I know a lot of people can't afford $500 selections. So what I did was I'm releasing an owner selection for $149, and I'm also, as a gift, giving you through Sunday absolutely free. So you get through Today through Sunday for $149 plus an owner selection, absolutely free. Guys, you got winners, you got losers. Which one are you? On the behalf of VIP Sports and myself, we love you. Let's continue to have the biggest season we've ever had. And remember one thing, don't let the players be the only ones that get paid. We love you. Make sure you check out that sneak peek of the Million Dollar Weekend and share it with your friends. Let's go get that money. It's Steve Stevens, I bust your bookie head open Split it to the white meat, I ain't joking Me and Dirt Bomb in the ghost float Straight OG like that kush I be smoking It's way too potent for rookies to come hit it A little white girl around, I might sniff it Popping bub in the club, so twisted My pops keeps telling me to go get it So I'm at the sports book, betting big on the Clippers I'm talking about five figures, I need a few shots of liquor Might need another zipper if the bomb play me Fuck around and put a half a meal on Tom Brady When it comes to betting sports, Steve Stevens a beast Need a certified winner called VIP Sports I got too many felonies to ride around with my Glock So sure to keep it since I got shot in Vegas like Pirates